All right, I've got this crazy tree roots, this crazy tree, this mountain, this tree, and I've got some good mountains behind it too once I clean up around this tree. But I'm just trying to rough place and stack these layers right now. And I think I need that funky tree on top, otherwise it looks too Lord of the Rings. It looks too elegant. And I want it to look funkier, like children's booky. So, you know, your own aesthetics. But I do like this severe hillside. So that's my middle ground. I have middle ground and background. But what I'm missing is the foreground from my sketch. Like these big rocks, plants, things like that. So to bring those in, they go on top. I have quite a few options. So let's bring in a big rock. What's nice about this element from Pixabay is it's already cut out. It's a PNG element. It's honestly probably not a real rock. It's probably like a uh, the kind of thing you find in a pet store, right? A terrarium decoration that then was photographed on a soundstage and cut out. But these are incredibly useful. They're what are called um, compositing assets because they can be used to mask and cover things. And I can maybe flip it. Yeah, I liked it the other way. Come on. Yeah. So you don't want to do what I just did, which was try to do a command Z within a free transform command in Photo P, because it will just eject all of your free transform commands. I get spoiled by Photoshop, which has more running memory. And so it will remember your internal commands, even though you haven't hit return yet. And if none of that makes any sense to you, don't worry about it. That's just why I was ex exclaiming the way I was. Now, in order to make it look naturalistic, it kind of depends, bless you, it depends the way the light is hitting things. And remember, you can always warp your elements too, especially if they're organic to kind of get them to fit into the, the space in the way you need them to. And we keep them as a smart object until the very last minute. So this one I don't even need to cut out because it's already cut out. What about this guy? It's a nice colorful rock. This one I'm just going to cut out right away because I know it's, it's way bigger than I need. But what I like are the little flowers and the grass underneath it. That's going to get a big clump of that, a lot of overlap. And I can even get some of those fuzzy flowers because they're in the extreme foreground. So then I duplicate Command J and delete the smart object underneath to save memory. Option Command T, shrink it down to the size I want. The larger I keep it on the layer, the more memory it takes up. And I can stretch it, and I can distort it. And make it a foreground element that I like. Maybe it's coming in from this corner. OK, now what's on top of that? And this blue crystal. So I'm getting all my color in there. Ah, good gemstone photography. Way bigger than I need. I'm going to go ahead and immediately cut that out. Rough cut, lots of overlap. Make use of this shadow underneath. Duplicate, Command J, delete the smart object and then free transform, because I know it's only going to be smaller to fit into my foreground. So it's going to be all these kind of gemstones and rock textures kind of piling together to fill up this bottom edge, this immediate foreground. Maybe I squeeze it a little.
right? I need something. So I'm going to use this foliage, this house plant, a nice little philodendron from a weird angle. I'm going to shrink it down and I'm going to push it behind this rock. I'm going to flip it, have it come in from the corner, I'm going to angle it. So they're all free transforms. Warp it a little bit. And sometimes when you have transitions that are too strong, too fast, you need filler like this to go in between. So I'm going to move that behind my rock. And then I'm going to cut it out. But I only need to worry about cutting it. This is kind of my tropical element, right? Uh, where it's actually going to be needed. I did Command T there instead of Option Command T. Command T in an internet browser just opens up a new tab. So I'm going to do Option Command T. There we go. Shrink it a little bit. Like that. Yeah, that works well. And now, when I cut it out, I don't need to worry about cutting it out anywhere here. I just need to worry about cutting it out above the rock line. Again, a rough cut. Not that rough. In fact, I'm pretty sure I don't want this out of focus leaf in it. So I'm just roughly cutting with my lasso. Even if it goes beyond my borders a little bit, that's fine. So I might want to grow it. And then I don't really care what's happening underneath the rock. So I hit Command-J. Then I delete. There we go. So now I've got kind of the color and the whimsy. And maybe I want to move one layer on top of another layer. You just do that by stacking them. And maybe I want to, yeah. Let's see, is there anything else? Oh, these flowers, this pink. All this stuff to play with. I'm going to go ahead and flip it. And I'm going to do a rough cut inside of it. Because this is what's called a, a narrow depth of field photograph. So all of this stuff that's really fuzzy is not really usable in a composite. But this, which is sharp, that's going to be become like my colorful bush of my sketch that transitions into other stuff. So it's like this cloud of pink. Command J, delete the smart object. Option Command T to free transform. Shrink it down. Figure out where to place it. probably right in there. I'm going to flip it and I'm going to shrink it. Yeah, I like that it can overlap the rock a little bit. And I'll cut this all out, clean this all up. Good. All right. How many layers do I have? Yeah, so visible. What am I actually using? I can go through. I've got a layer that's going to get erased, which is my sketch layer on top. But of usable layers, got one, two, three, four, five, and that's just for the foreground. Right? That's a kind of one layer of depth. Middle ground, one, so that's six, seven, eight, nine, and then 10 for the background. And then my sketch. So yeah, so this is 10 layers to adjust and color. Now that I've done that, I've done the rough cut, I'm gonna use my crop tool again, and I'm just gonna crop it a little bit closer to my image. I'm not gonna crop it right to my guides yet, because I might want to grow my landscape. 
but now this shows me all the things I have to work with. And I'm immediately thinking, you know, what I'm missing are all those beautiful tree roots that I loved. So to get those to show up, if I still like this scale, I got to take all these foreground elements, select them all and move them all together. Maybe even flip them all. So option command T, flip them horizontally. So that those tree roots can kind of show up, right? And then maybe I want to take this rock and move that. and maybe flip it. So you get to play with these before you go into the really time consuming task of color correcting and lighting and refined cutting. And then these plants, probably making a little bit too much of these. But maybe an arrangement by like that is a little bit better for what I'm going for. And then I might decide with this kind of arrangement, I'm just moving some elements around a little bit. I want to change where my guides go. So now the bottom of my sketch is like here, bottom of my composition. So I can see those roots now. And the top of my sketch is like here. So I am missing some sky. And then I bring this element in, this really dark blue, interesting, starry sky. And I'm going to run that behind everything. Kind of make sense? And now because that's my background element, I can go to the one I had before and make a cutout of those rough edges. So now this sky I'm going to replace and transition into that dark night sky. Be a lot more children's booky. I'm going to select the inverse and duplicate and then just delete the smart object underneath. So now if I build it up in layers, I can start to do other rough cuts that are helpful. Like I don't need as much of this, though I do still like some of those clouds. The tree on top, that tree, that tree. Now I'm going to teach you one thing which is incredibly helpful for compositing. And it's called internal compositing. So notice I have this tree, I have this tree, both of those references have the same problem. They never show the top of the tree. And with the way I've composed it, where now the top of my composition is up here, I need a top. In fact, if I had a top of the tree, I could even move the top of my composition to up here. So what can I do? I can take this tree and I can find that source image, bring it back in. This is the same one I've used before, but now I'm going to use it just to give me a top to the tree. Why is it called internal compositing? Because it's using an element that you've already used and you're using a part of it in a different way somewhere else. And just so it doesn't look too copy pasty, I am going to warp it and work with it. to look different than the tree that's up on the hill. And the only part I really need of it is the top. I'll use it a little bit at these edges as well, but that's all. Duplicate that, erase the smart object to save memory. And if I want to give you a preview of some refined cutting, 